Hello again, um, very, very quick, nice little tutorial on how to create a flat monster energy can with logo. I'm going to show you how to draw the logo up um, using some really easy little shortcuts um, and then show you also how to generate that sort of flat can that you've got in front and on, on, on the screen at this moment in time. So I'm going to get started straight away and um, give an introduction on how I generated this particular graphic. Um, all resources are found on the link below this video on YouTube if you found us on YouTube. Um, if you click on the link in the description that will take you through to the actual blog post where the, all the entire tutorial is kind of held and presented and all the resources are in there. Um, just very quickly looking into the actual file itself you're going to find the font that you need for the actual monster text um, a final version that we drew up, some of the resources you're going to need, um, the texture in particular, the logo and it, the, the actual logo itself, the existing logo, a can, and um, some of the final versions that we used too. So what you're actually looking to aim to do is um, we've pasted a kind of rock texture over the top of the graphics so it looks quite cool. What we're looking to do is try and generate um, one can with a logo and then leave you to generate your own. Um, so let's get started. So I'm very very quickly going to just back open up Inkscape and I'm just going to go file, import and I'm going to go to my desktop, find my source file which might be in your downloads file, uh, in your downloads folder on your, dot, on your computer and I'm just going to find that logo and click open. Okay so there it is. I'm just going to zoom into it so I've got, um, I can see it a little easier. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my Bezier Cursor Straight Lines tool out and I'm just going to do a very quick dot to dot around the shape. Now, don't be, you don't need to get this absolutely spot on because the logo itself is quite kind of um, ragged. Um, so, don't be too concerned if you're not absolutely on point but uh, get it as close to as possible and try to get the proportions correct. I've seen versions of this monster logo that's been redrawn and um, you know the, the elements of the actual letter M look too fat and too short. So if you can get the proportions correct, i.e. length uh, or height and, and width, then you're going to end up with a decent result. So slowly repetitive, but um, just click point to point, dot to dot if you want. And I'm just clicking on the mouse you'll hear on the uh, microphone to get right around this shape until I've got a final version. Now this particular example of the logo is in two parts. So I've got my first bit done and I'm very quickly just going to round this off by finishing this last bit. As you can see I'm not spending a great deal of time trying to get every element of the existing logo correct because by the time I'm finished you're not really going to see a great deal of difference. So I'm almost there. Find the end point. And there I am. So if I get rid of, um, if I actually select the two elements that I've drawn out, hold down shift to do that and click first. So I'll just uh, do it again so you can see. Hold down shift once you've selected one element and select the other one. And then what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to use my color picker officially called pick colors and um, I'm just going to use any green from there and then I'm going to right click down in the bottom left hand corner of the screen um, if I reduce the size of my interface so you can see this down in the bottom left hand side of the screen you see a flat color stroke which is black at the moment if I right click um, if I can get to it right click on it and then hit remove stroke, that leaves me in the flat design. So I'm now just going to delete the background image and then I'm going to be left with a monster logo like so. I'm just going to join them together, path and union, padlock it so that the scale doesn't warp. I'm just going to scale it down so you can already see that it, you know, you don't have to be dead. Um, you don't have to be dead accurate with your trace um, when you're using the Bezier Curves and Straight Line tool. I'm just going to change that to a slightly more luminous green. And now I'm going to start on the can. Um, the way I do that, same process, but this time we're going to be a bit more cheeky and do uh, a couple of corners, so to speak. So I'm just going to import, 
and I am looking for picture 18. I'll rename this to Can afterwards. I actually found this on a tutorial website, so uh, uh, I hope you don't mind us using this. I'm just going to go select it, hit open, and OK. And then I've got my can. Now, this is the trick. Go path, trace bitmap. I'm going to select grays, and I'm just going to update it. What I'm going to do is remove the background here, so hopefully that should get rid of that white background. I'm going to click OK. And that should leave me, if I move that out of the way, with the can without that white background, though. It would have probably caused me a few problems. And what I'm now going to do is close that dialog box. I'm going to right click and ungroup. I'm just going to go path and union, and that changes it all to one color. So you can kind of see what I'm doing here now. Um, I'm going to change this to a dark gray, maybe a little bit lighter so you can see it. And I'm going to size it down, making sure that your pad locks lock so that the scale doesn't warp. And then what I'm now going to do is position that somewhere in the middle, put the object, raise the top. As you know with like the cans, the actual logo is not dead in the middle um, in terms of ver vertically. Um, except for, oh, sorry, horizontally, it's not kind of right in the middle, but down the vertical axis it is. So I'm just going to select, hold down shift, select the, um, the, uh, the logo, hold down shift, select the can. I'm going to my alignment tools here. And using the biggest object, I'm going to make sure that it is vertically aligned and not horizontally. I'm not going to bother about that. Now we're going to put the font in. The font's called Green Energy. Um, so you're going to have to make sure your cap lock is on when you're doing this. Monster. I'm going to change it to white so you can see it. And I'm just going to highlight the text. And write green. Select that. And there's my text ready to go. Gonna select this, gonna bring this down to like 48, maybe a little bit smaller, 40. Gonna make sure that it's vertically uh, centered to the biggest object. Make sure that's the same. Okay, and then I'm just gonna hold down the up arrow on my keyboard, and move that up. And this looks like the text needs to be a little bit smaller. I'm just going to select that and drop it to 36, no, 32, yep. Yeah. And then I'm going to again center it on the vertical axis. And there is my can of monster. Now you can pretty much do loads of stuff with that because it's really simple vector shapes. As you can see, I've generated a range of them for every flavor. Um, I've added a 2D gradient using the Bezier curves, straight line tool, dropping a gradient through it. Um, and really this type of sort of 2D flat design you can do loads with, generate um, patterns and, and collages, whatever you want to do with it. And then obviously flush it into GIMP if you want and add textures. So hope that's useful and uh, thanks for watching.